Hey there, keep it simple, Stuman friends. Happy Thanksgiving. Today is Wednesday, November 22nd, the day before Thanksgiving. And I want to talk about parent meetings. I put out a poll on one of the Facebook groups and asked how often you do parent meetings and for what. And a bunch of people said that they do at most one parent meeting a year or no parent meetings. And if they do one, it's really only for information or regarding a trip. And I know some of us have tried parent meetings and they have failed in the past, but I think parent meetings are a really valuable tool. So I've got a couple do's and a couple don'ts for parent meetings I think might be helpful to you. So check it out. Hey, before we get started, again, please subscribe, like, comment, and definitely share the videos. Hit the little bell button below the video to get notifications so that it tells you when we post great new content. So first of all, parent meetings. I think they're a great thing. Here's a couple of reasons why. I think you cannot put a price or a value on face-to-face -face time with parents all at one time. Uh, hopefully you're available Sunday mornings or during your service times to meet with parents, to hang out with them, to greet them, shake hands, get to know them. Hopefully you do intentional parent ministry, and that's not what I'm talking about in this video, where you have discussion groups, you do seminars. That's a whole different video that we're gonna do in the future. Um, but I'm talking about meetings where you get parents together to share information and hopefully do more than that as well. Um, you can't replace the face-to-face -face stuff. Hopefully you're doing, more, you're doing great electronic communication. Again, we did a video about that, which we'll post right up here. Um, you, you can do things like MailChimp, you can send texts and all kinds of stuff, and those are great and important and very valuable. But you cannot replace the face-to-face -face time with your parents. So here's a couple do's and don'ts for the parenting. Let's start with the don'ts first. First is don't just give information. Because if, if they get to the end of your meeting and they just give information, half the people are gonna think that could have been an email. Why am I here? That could have been an email. And that's true, it could have been an email. Now, we all both know that no, no one reads emails, right? Re emails are a tough way to communicate, an important way, but it doesn't get everybody, right? And you can't just send things home with kids if half doesn't get there. Right, so you have to do a lot of different things, but the most important stuff has gotta come face to face. So don't just give information, and we'll talk about uh, what to do, what to give out, but remember, just don't just give information, because that's boring. Who wants to hear that? That could have been an email, and that's a rule. If you could have sent it in an email, then you should, okay? Um, two, um, don't go over the time that you publicize. If you said, hey, I need 45 minutes, I need an hour, I need half an hour, I need 90 minutes, you better stick to that. And if people have questions beyond then, make sure you say, hey, just so you know, I, I promise you to be out of here in 45 minutes. If you have any questions, you can ask me up front or you can take time, whatever, but just so you know that I'm done. So practice what you're gonna say. Script it out, be really prepared. Most people don't expect youth pastors to have their stuff together because we're young, we're inexperienced. Um, and so the parents like us because the kids like us, but they're not supposed to be professional. So be professional when you work with parents. Third is, uh, don't give away the prize. Okay, don't give away the prize. Here's what I mean by that. Is don't just send out a recap email after the parent meeting with all the information that you gave out. Because otherwise people will stop coming to those meetings. And you want people to come to those meetings because face-to-face -face time is important. So here's what I did and it worked out amazing. Okay, here's what I did. I told parents and students for weeks that the parent meeting that we had a few weeks ago was the only place to get information about our summer experiences, our both our camp and our mission trip, and the fundraising opportunities that go along with them. I said they're not gonna be in an email, they're not gonna be in a handout, they're not published anywhere else, this is the only place to get it. And I said, if your parents don't show, they will have to schedule a time to meet with me during my work week. No eight o'clock phone calls at night, you know, catching them up because they missed it, we don't do that. Schedule an actual time, either a phone conversation with me, or in my office. And that sounds harsh, and the parents were like, mm, okay, but here's what yielded that. First, my parent meeting was well attended, okay? People showed up. Second, the people who couldn't make it, I said, I need just, I need just get to something with me. So I got three parent phone conversations of at least 20 minutes. That's priceless to me, to communicate with parents that way, that personally. I got three other meetings in my office in the last two weeks. One, just yesterday, catching up parents on the information that we passed out and the heart and vision behind what, what, what we're doing was a family who one of the girls is thriving she's older she's doing great the second girl is uh, who's a junior higher has really sort of abandoned their faith and even said that they don't believe and to spend be able to spend time with them to encourage them to love on them 
to give them practical advice, to cheer them on, to tell them how great they're doing, um, and to pray with them, that was huge. And it all happened because I said, I'm not gonna give away the prize. So I got time with parents on my couch in my office with a family that was hurting all because of this parent meeting concept. So don't give away the prize. So three don'ts, don't give, just give information, that's boring. Don't go over time, people won't like that. And don't give away the prize. Make them show up and be responsible for what they need to get for their kids. Okay, then the two, the two do's, three don'ts, two do's. First, do share vision and passion. So we said don't just give information, so definitely share vision and passion. Let me give you an example. So we talked about mission trips and camps and we talked about how the camps and mission trips fulfill the next steps concept of spiritual development that's important to the vision of our church and our student ministry. So we didn't just share, hey, here's where we're going, here's how much it costs, here's how the fun, here's a video, great. We shared why and why we think the way we set things up is gonna help parents accomplish what they wanna see in the lives of their students. And we even said, hey, the mission trip is an intentional next step. So if you have a student in the middle grades who's maybe gone to camp, been there, done that, would you coach them to maybe consider the mission trip? So we help parents resource their kids into discipleship in a really great way. And so we were able to share vision and passion about student ministry uh, in that time that was related to the information that they were getting. So that, uh, that's the first do. Second do is definitely have some fun. Play a game. Last year, we um, you guys maybe saw that uh, saran wrap game going on where you wrap things up in this big ball of saran wrap and they pass it around, you roll dice. We had we did that with camp and we for our camp meeting and the other things that were in the bowl were things that you needed for camp like a little bit of some sunscreen and bug spray and sunglasses and a camp t-shirt and whoever unwrapped at the time got a prize and it was just fun we put sometimes we play youth ministry games in a parent meeting just to have some fun um and so we want to make it a memorable experience people like oh i want to go back because it's a little bit fun right and then also do a really good job of having really great information have things written down and also do give out the paper information at the end when you want them to see it. So if you hand out a flyer or an information sheet about fundraising or trips or details, they're looking at that and they're not hearing you. So definitely hand that out at the end. So three don'ts, a couple do's, hopefully that helps you and hopefully you can get a fresh passion for doing a parent meeting. I know parent meeting sounds like a really lame thing. Maybe call it something else. But we do some intentional parent ministry, but we also do this really great meeting in the fall to prep our parents for what's coming up in the spring and summer as far as preparing for our summer experiences. Um, but it's a really great time to connect and it has yielded some amazing fruit. So hopefully that's helpful to you. Uh, go do a great parent meeting. Obviously not now, it's Thanksgiving, yeah, Christmas coming up. But if you're planning one for January, February, uh, think about these as you prepare for that. Again, happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas. We don't see you before then. Uh, some new great content coming up next week, including a new game tutorial and some stuff about pastor and senior pastor relationships. So stay tuned.